to go through a couple of the different slides that we didn't have time to go through in the 291 class since we had an abbreviated session due to the snow closing. So what we're looking at here, um, I'm going to go between several different documents, the Frog Lab slides that we have here for PowerPoints, the Word document that we have that uh, illustrates a rubric, and then I'm going to get, do an example of some of those different figures here using LabScribe and one of the different um, one of the ones that you guys actually uh, developed here, um, it is the one that's, uh, I think, from Group 1's nerve stimulation data. Don't get too excited, though, because uh, Group 1, you're going to actually need to show me your uh, muscle stimulation data. So it's going to be a, look a little bit different. But the, um, the thing I wanted to do then was to just try to illustrate a couple of key points um, in terms of um, logistics and then also trying to navigate the, uh, the assignment itself. The first thing is actually going to um, the uh, Grand Valley website and actually downloading your file. When you do that, um, what we found is that Firefox is the, um, the, the browser to use. Do not use Internet Explorer because for whatever reason, when you download it from the 291 uh, file exchange, it downloads it as a zip file and doesn't allow you to actually work with it, whereas Firefox uh, seems to, and probably Chrome would work as well. So what I had done is I had gone under File Exchange, opened up Group 1's um, documents there, and then went through and actually downloaded the, um, the one called Nerve Stimulation here. And, um, and then I clicked on it. And it says I'd like to save the file. I said yes, and then it goes and it saves it down there. And so it's in my downloads. You guys, um, once you now have that open and you have LabScribe open, then you can open up. I usually go through LabScribe and then choose a file to actually open up. So I go to open here and then choose a file, click on it, and that would open up the file that I want to manipulate, which is what I have here. Where are we, though? Um, we have just a bunch of lines here. If we zoom out, clicking on the double mountains up here, that allows us to zoom out. If we wanted to zoom in, we can click on the single mountain. So that gives us and expands our x-axis here. Um, and we see several different lines that are indicated here. If we wanted to expand it so we can see those a little bit more easily, we can click on this option of auto scale, which is right up here. And we can see those lines a lot more easily. And then down below, this is all about muscle contraction force. You can see the axis here and the time over here. And each of these peaks corresponds to a, um, a spike that happens here in terms of the um, stimulation that was given. And so this was given to the nerve, and what we can see in this case is that you start to see uh, muscle twitches occur at voltages that are um, around 1.12 volts. So before that, we don't really see that much. We can actually check, though, and see, well, this is probably threshold because it's 0.12. That's the lowest voltage it took to actually generate um, a twitch. but we can check under um, the six volts and just see what it looks like. And we can do that by taking one cursor here, and let's ask for two cursors. We're going to go up to the double cursors thing here, and then I'm going to click on one of them here, and the other one I'm going to click and drag it over here. And then I'm going to zoom in between those two. I've now expanded that space. You can see the little uh, blips here referring to the stimulation or voltage that we've actually applied. And then here's our muscle stimulation. I'm still not seeing that much there. I can auto scale it and just see if I can detect anything there at all. And I can't. Okay, so it looks like 0.12 is the lowest uh, threshold that we have. When I went to zoom out, you can see that I'm still on this. This Y scale is pretty zoom, uh, is pretty um, focused on this um, one region here. So I'm going to auto scale it to get the Y scale back into line, and I can see the entire peak itself now. Okay, I'm moving quickly here, but do know that you can always, I mean, the nice thing about a video, right, is that you can stop it and go back and um, play different parts over again. The, um, the things that you're going to be asked to do uh, will vary. Um, one of them is that you'll be asked to pick out a certain, like, show your entire data set. And so if you want to do that, you can just zoom out and then copy and paste this file. Um, and then you can say, I've got a little image over there. Uh, zoom out, and then edit, copy, and then I can put it into my Word document and paste it. 
and that will allow me to uh, to put it into uh, and save the, the file. Um, so that's um, and I can I now have that image that I can manipulate and I can annotate um, and indicate where it is that I see threshold and where it is that I see submaximal and maximal, etc. Well, let's take a look then at what it is that the um, that they're asking for in here. Figure one is saying generate an image entire muscle stimulation data set. Uh, clearly identify the threshold, submaximal, maximal, and supermaximal stimulus voltages for the data in the images. So you have to do it in the image. You want to make sure you do that. And you want to make sure that you're doing this where you have um, where you can indicate you put a little arrow that would um, in the Word document that you've created and then uh, indicate that this would be threshold, for example. This would be probably your maximal here. And then as you exceeded this and kept on adding more and more voltage here, you've exceeded your threshold. These correspond to um, the definitions that are given on this third slide of our, power, our frog PowerPoint slides. You can see that here where sub-threshold, threshold, sub-maximal, threshold, sub maximal, and super-maximal. Stimulus strength is being applied to generate these different sized um, peaks here. And so what's happening is that we're recruiting more and more of the um, muscle fibers as we're adding more and more voltage. And so that's one way that we can help to generate um, a graded muscle contraction. And so that's uh, connected to some of the questions that they'll ask you in the uh, document itself. Uh, going back to this, they ask you not only for the image of the entire muscle data set, they ask you for that question, how voltage applied to the gastrointestinal system causes a contraction. So how it is that an action potential is actually generated. Um, so you, what you want to think about is that depolarizing stimulus that's been applied to the, um, to the muscle directly, to itself, and then how that in turn causes um, the, um, what ion channels are, respond to that depolarization, open up and cause an action potential to be made, and then in turn what are some of the um, effects that can happen uh, downstream of that. How is the force elevated by increases in voltage applied to the muscle? And you, so they want to talk about the motor units and size principle. At this point, you would have probably talked about this in 290 by the time you really start to finish the preparation part of this, but let's go ahead and take a look at a slide that touches on that where we're talking about how um, the um, um, motor a muscle can develop different levels of tension by increasing the number of motor units that are activated. So I'm going to let you guys look through that stuff uh, as part of your class and um, as um, or in, in your book to help supplement what you actually have here. But the, the discussion should pretty much be based off of what you have in 290. And um, the main idea is that you're talking about size of the, uh, the motor neurons themselves, really small ones can be, get depolarized first. And the second thing is that the actual, um, the number of um, the frequency in which they're being stimulated can also help to encourage the amount of, uh, uh, amount of um, contraction that can, that can occur. So this is, uh, I wanted to, I highlighted this because I wanted to just point off, uh, point out that, um, that idea. So you're going to need to describe what a motor unit is in there. So for a second figure, you're going to want to focus on a single muscle twitch contraction show with a cursor with, um, and how the peak muscle force generation is generated. In the, uh, add lines to image to indicate the latent period as well as contraction and relaxation phases. How do we do that? Let's go to here. We'll zoom in. You pull up the double uh, lines here. And you're going to focus in. So you're going to take one. Uh, I'll zoom in on this particular one right here for fun. Um, and I want to look at this, um, this single muscle twitch that's right here. So I'm going to ask for it to go in between the zoom between the cursors. This is a muscle twitch that I had framed. They reset the blue lines to um, just uh, a third of the way, on either to the left or to the right. And now I can take these blue lines and adjust it so that the cursors are either at the bottom here or the top here, and look at V2 minus V1 to show what the contraction force is. In this case, it's 0 0.345. And I don't know what, the, uh, what it is here. I believe it's force. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is in grams. And um, it would have been saved as grams because you guys calibrated this, or we calibrated it right before you came in. So, um, so that's what we're looking for, looking at in terms of contraction force: 0.345 grams, um, and that corresponds to this little onset here. I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit more on this. So I'm going to zoom in between the two cursors again 
so that we can really see the onset of the depolarizing stimulus here, which I'm going to place a cursor there, and then the onset of the actual contraction phase itself, when we start to actually, um, when we start to see this little upward swing here. And it might be there. I guess it's like right, maybe right there. Um, and so this difference here is known as a latency. We started the stimulation, but we don't start to see contraction until a little bit later. And we can look at T2 minus T1, which is up here, to show us what that latency is. In this case, it's 20 milliseconds. So we're looking at the time right from here over to here. So that tells us our latency period. And, um, and then if we want to know what the contraction force is, again, we can just take these cursors, move them from one at the baseline, one at the peak, and look at V2 minus V1. And we get that zero peak. We can copy, paste this, and put this into a Word document. Um, looking at the question for this uh, series of molecular events that happen um, in terms of latent period and the binding, um, starting with the binding of the acetylcholine receptor and nicotinic, the nicotinic receptor and all the other factors, one slide that can be helpful for trying to navigate that is um, here. Um, it, talks, it doesn't go into talking about how acetylcholine leaves a presynaptic terminal and um, the alpha motor neuron, but it does describe how after you get the depolarization of the sarcolemma and the T2 bills, what occurs from there on out. So you're going to want to refer to uh, your notes from 290 to help you out with the full scope of that question, but this is a useful slide to help you get oriented for question uh, number two. Figure three here, what we're looking at, is generating a graph uh, documenting the force um, and on the y-axis and the, um, each muscle length of the x-axis. What are they talking about? They're talking about the length tension um, relationship. So in this case, we're going to go back, we're going to go back to, um, let's see, we'll go back to this one. And we'll use group two's uh, documents for length, t length tension. Hope it's good. There we go. File exchange. And I'm going to go down. And Information in the chat list, part B is uh, optimal tension. There we go. All right, it's going to download it. I'm going to save the file right down here. Um, and then here, I'm just going to move it out to my desktop. Somewhere. That can work. And let's see how yeah, yeah. yeah, pause this. Yes. 